Welcome, 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 welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. First of all, thanks very much, sir. Happy Martin Luther King Day, everybody. Today, today we celebrate this civil rights icon all over America. Uh, uh, fun fact, in Mississippi and Alabama, it's also Robert E. Lee Day. Look, even if you like Robert E. Lee, there's a lot of other Mondays out there. Oh, I'm sorry, was, was this Martin Luther King Day, too? Oh, we didn't know. But, you know, we've already printed the calendars, and, uh, also, we totally knew. <laughs> but more importantly, it's day four of <laughs> Holgate. <laughs> now, I am sure, uh, I'm confident, uh, I'm uh, confident uh, to my core, uh, confident that that's gonna be bleeped, because CBS has higher standards than the president. <laughs> Trump got in hot water last week after the immigration meeting, uh, during which he used that phrase to describe Haiti and African countries, according to Democratic Senator Dick Durbin. Really? I'm allowed to say Dick Durbin? <laughs> That's surprising. <laughs> Trump said it on Thursday, and not only did the White House not immediately deny it, Trump reportedly was calling friends to brag about it. <laughs> He's like a toddler calling his mom to the potty. Come look at the load I dropped in the national discourse. Yeah. But the next. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Big boy. But the next morning, after getting a poop load of criticism, Trump suddenly denied it, tweeting, The language used by me at the DACA meeting was tough, but this was not the language used. He's like the racist Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> Unless ye guess my racist speech, the president ye shall not impeach. <laughs> <laughs> then on Friday, two Republican senators who were in the room, Tom Cotton and David Perdue, issued a statement saying, we do not recall the president saying these comments specifically. That's a non-denial denial. Your Honor, Your Honor, I don't recall which knife I used to stab the victim specifically. <laughs> the defense rests. <laughs> okay, so they couldn't remember. Then yesterday, Purdue changed his tune with George Stephanopoulos. I'm telling you he did not use that word, George, and I'm telling you it's a gross misrepresentation. I'll give you gross. But misrepresentation? So yesterday, you can't remember whether it happened, then suddenly, you have a vivid memory of it never happening. I guess that's, you know, fairly common. Like, how at first, I couldn't remember if Senator Perdue had a spine, then I had a vivid memory of him never having one. <laughs> so, it's a medical miracle. How he walks upright, I don't, I don't know. Jellyfish. <laughs> so, Dick Durbin says he said it. Uh, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham is saying, like, I'm not saying he said it, but he said it. And now these other senators say he didn't say it. What's the truth? Washington Post reporter Josh Dossie. People said to me over the weekend that there's a semantic difference. Some people in the meeting heard the phrase house instead of hole. Oh! <laughs> oh, well, that changes everything. He didn't... Yeah. He didn't say hole. He said house. Either way, Trump is being a complete asshouse. <laughs> Who? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, just, just maybe insane. doesn't belong in the white hole. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ah. what a white hole. By the way, what was the phrase the reporter said uh, he might have used? I can't remember. Can you, John? He's a <laughs> house. He's like a white tag, keeping the Haitians out. Ow! Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Got that. Something like that. Mnemonic device. Thanks for clearing that up, John. Now. <laughs> All this leads to one question. Is Donald Trump a racist? Well, last night, a reporter asked him just that question. No, no, I'm not a racist. I am the least racist person you have ever interviewed. Really? 
The only way that's true is if that reporter works for KKK Cat Fancy, <laughs> the magazine for lovers of racist felines. White, white meower. <laughs> now, uh, just while we got a second here, that man standing behind Trump at Mar-a-Lago is House Majority Leader and non-speaking dad role in a Disney movie, Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> The Washington Post has a big article that details just how close McCarthy and the president have gotten. So close, the Trump has begun to refer to McCarthy as my Kevin. <laughs> my Kevin. According to donut rules, that means Trump licked him. <laughs> He's mine now. He's mine now. <laughs> and McCarthy has found unique ways to connect with the president. During a trip on Air Force One, Trump and McCarthy bonded while eating Starburst candies. McCarthy noticed that Trump only ate the cherry and strawberry flavors, so McCarthy later told a staffer to put together a jar of the red and pink Starburst for Trump. McCarthy put his name on the jar, which was delivered to the president. Oh, so Trump likes some colors more than others, just like his immigration policy. There. Race to that. Race to that punchline. Here comes the punchline! <laughs> the article is full of McCarthy's attempts to shamelessly ingratiate himself to the president. McCarthyisms, as they're called. But <laughs> the most yeah. disturbing detail in this article is what McCarthy says they have in common. They both like to talk a lot while watching movies. <laughs> I thought it was impossible to like Trump less. Thanks for watching my YouTube video. Now it's your turn to thank me. Click subscribe, and at the end of the next video, I'll thank you again.